With all of these Intel crashing issues going around, maybe affecting your PC, you might be sitting there thinking for yourself, what am I supposed to do? Well, why not just replace your crashing i9 with one of these puppies, Intel Core i7-4930K. It doesn't crash. Well, as much anyway. I bought a 12-year-old Intel system, and I was wondering, how well does it hold up? Can it compete with today's hardware? Intel's X79 platform first released way back in late 2011 and it was Intel's top of the line enthusiast platform. The Intel Core i7-3960X Extreme Edition processor was back then the biggest and baddest of them all, sporting 6 cores, 12 threads, easily beating Intel's mainstream quad-core offerings and AMD's at the time most high-end CPU, the FX8150. I got two CPUs for this platform to test. The entry-level quad-core i7-3820 and for the platform's second generation 6-core CPU, the Core i7-4930K. I will also test them against my AMD Ryzen 7 5800X3D, and the graphics card that I will be using is an Asus Radeon RX 7900XT. Alright, let's have a look at the test systems. As you can see, every CPU is overclocked. The X79 motherboard I have is the GD45, definitely a lower-end board that I don't really recommend all that much. X79 natively supports quad-channel memory, which can help when it's DDR3 versus DDR4. Since there are no native M.2 slots on this platform, a SATA SSD is used. Technically, you can get around this problem, if you so wish, by buying an M.2 PCIe expansion card. While I've never used these myself, they're cheap and probably works reasonably well, so the option is there, if you so wish. Both systems run Windows 10, Windows 11 is not supported by the Intel system. The graphics card is overclocked, and I have tested both systems with AMD Adrenaline Edition 24.5.1. Now, let's get to some benchmarks. Alright, starting things off, we have Cinebench 11.5. This is very much an older release of Cinebench, but I wanted to include this because note all the older systems that we have in this list. And they are systems that I have owned in the past, and I wanted to compare them to the Intel system, the X79 system, as well as the 5800X3D. Because if you look at this, you have all the older systems all together, the FX8320, you can see how just how massively far behind AMD was back at the time. You have a C on 8 core there, just for fun. And then you can see the very interesting numbers here. The 4930K is actually really, really close to the modern Ryzen CPUs. It does beat out the 1600. And then it gets kind of close to the 3600, not quite there, it's a few points behind. But looking at these numbers, it looks really good for the 4930K. Let's check out the next benchmark. 3D Mark Firestrike, a test that was very much relevant during X79 platforms days. As you can see here, the 4930K and 3820, they just can't make the 7900X3 stretch its legs at all. The 5800X3D is a whole 50% faster than the 4930K. And I was really curious why this was the case. Is the CPU bottlenecking the graphics card that hard? So, I was curious, I went to 3 Mark's website, the results tab, and I looked at the graphics score, just to see if somebody else got a higher graphics score than me. Maybe I had an issue somewhere in my system, but, well, no, it's just the CPUs. So, I guess we're moving on to the next test. 3 Mark Time Spy, the 3820 and 4930K does a lot better here. The AMD, of course, is still way ahead, it's 25% better than the 4930K. But the graphics card could actually stretch its legs a bit more this time. The fans actually kicked in, so that's very nice. Now, let us check out the gaming results. Ori and the Will of the Wisps, tested at 1440p high settings. The AMD is 66% faster than the 4930K. And changing the settings to low doesn't do anything to the Intel systems, while the AMD now runs away with it and has a 119% advantage over the 4930K. The gaming experience overall, while the AMD has a way higher frame rate, I think the Intel systems did really well here. The gaming performance is good enough to drive higher refresh rate monitors, they had a smooth experience, I didn't really notice any issues, so they get a pass for me. XCOM 2, the 5800X3D is once again 66% faster than the 4930K. The 1% lows, on the other hand, were very alike. I'm not sure if this is because of the game engine, but after several test runs, I got very similar results. Overall though, it's very playable on both Intel CPUs, while not high refresh rate territory.
City Skylines, tested in a city with a population of 100,000, sees the 5800X3D 120% better average and 111% better lows than the 4930K. It's a very choppy experience on both Intel systems. The 5800X3D really thrives in this game. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, tested with the built-in benchmark at 1440p, shows the AMD being 42% better than the 4930K, 94% better lows. What's interesting to note here is that the 4930K is in turn 74% better than the 3820, with 59% better lows. Lowering the resolution does basically nothing for the most part, the AMD now 65% higher average than the 4930K. Horizon Zero Dawn, the extra d is again 65% better than the 4930K and 82% better lows. The 3820 isn't too far behind in average but falls short in the 1% lows. Game was however very playable on every single CPU. The very recent title, Horizon Forbidden West, proved too new for the 3820, as when launching the game it was met with an error message stating missing CPU instructions. While there are workarounds for this on YouTube, I did not try them myself. The 4930K did not have this issue, but the X3D was still 66% faster on average and 94% better 1% lows in this section of the game. While testing, I noticed that the 4930K did very reasonable in most sections, providing 60fps gameplay. However, there were definitely areas where it fell much shorter. I decided to investigate further. In the DLC section of the game, the 4930K was severely behind, even at low settings, while the X3D happily provided a 304% higher average frame rate. Avatar Frontiers of Pandora also seemed to prove too new of a title for the 3820. What is odd is that the game seemed to launch just to crash the desktop shortly after. On ultra settings with quality FSR, the X3D was 38% faster on average than the 4930K, with 30% higher 1% lows. Lowering the settings still with quality FSR had the X3D gain a much more substantial lead now at 112% on average. I do think that the 4930K provided a very good experience though in this game, and not just in the testing area of the game. Looking at total system power consumption tested in Cinebench, you can see that the 5800X3D is a much more efficient CPU compared to both Intel CPUs. Nothing surprising here. What does the numbers tell us? Well, for one, the Core i7 4930K has aged far, far better than the Core i7 3820. There is a year and a half gap between them, but I don't see the 4930K being in the same spot as the 3820, even in two years' time. The two additional cores and the additional instruction sets help it tremendously. And I believe this statement would be the same, even if the comparison was between the sixth core of the same generation as the 3820 the 3930K. The 3930K certainly overclocks better on average, but the slightly higher performance per clock and performance per watt benefits the 4930K enough to offset that for the most part. And you know, nobody wants to buy a big and bulky new cooler for an Asian platform, right? Uh, am I right? Point is, I don't think the 3000 series Centerbridge CPUs on the X79 platform hold up very well right now. The 4000 series Ivy Bridge does way better. Should you buy one though? Honestly, I don't recommend it. Because one quick scroll through eBay could buy you a, say, a Ryzen 5 2600 and a decently informed motherboard for similar or cheaper than the Core i7 4930K with a motherboard. My personal upgrade path back in 2018 was a 3930K to a Ryzen 5 1600. And while not a world of a difference, it did provide an upgrade path that I stuck to for over six years. Sure, it's not entirely fair to say that since I did switch motherboard once, 
But I didn't actually have to out of necessity. And that's the point. Why buy something you will have to replace very soon when you can buy something that lasts you for much longer? If you pick up an X79 system for free though, or basically for no price, a friend buys, uh, sells it to you for very cheap, sure, it can serve you very well even today. Thank you for watching this video.